Hello, and welcome to a Cause Bad Guys Tactical Breakdown. In today's breakdown, we are going to go through and do Nightwing for the Batman Miniatures game. Nightwing is also known as Dick Grayson, or the first Robin. This guy is a total badass, and the miniature that Night Models has done totally reflects that. It's him in a very dynamic pose. He's running forward with his batons. He's got the reverse grip on him. Super awesome. Uh, totally great. Like, I can't... Uh, like, how awesome this character actually is in the comic books. The way he's been uh, depicted in the video games and stuff. He's great. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right on into his character card. So right off the bat, this is Richard Grayson, also known as Nightwing. He's a sidekick for the Batman crew, so because he's a sidekick, he can also be taken as the leader for the crew or the boss. He is also able to be recruited for the Teen Titans and be a leader in the Teen Titans to be the boss there. He is a great model to have, uh, really good in both the crew and in the team. So let's go ahead and cover his weapons. So right off the bat, he has wingdings, which are just like batarangs. They are double stun with rate of fire two, two ammo. They are throwing, so he damages on his normal strength with them. Also, if he moves, he doesn't lose his rate of fire and they are short range, so 20 centimeters. Uh, pretty good stuff if he can't reach close combat for whatever reason which is not very normal because he is a very fast model. Uh, it, but if he can't get to close combat for whatever reason, he can throw these out at somebody and put out some damage. His second weapon is going to be the electric batons, which are double stun. They are handy, so they reroll to hit, and they're mechanic. So instead of wounding on his strength, they actually wound on a 3+, plus, which is great. Essentially, the mechanic is showing that his batons are tased. They have, like, electric prods on them. Super awesome. These these batons are actually a very efficient weapon for a Batman crew to have, and they're really good on Dick Grayson. So let's go ahead and go right on into his stats. So he is Willpower 6. Willpower 6 is going to be pretty standard for sidekicks. Uh... Sometimes Dick Grayson can be wanting for counters just because he's willpower 6. Also, if he starts taking damage, he can start losing that willpower. Uh, but you keep him healthy, keep this guy away from being ganged up on or having big hitters like Bane or Deathstroke go after him. You keep those guys away from him, and he is very efficient. He's really quick. He can get to where he needs to be. The willpower really uh, helps out. So he is strength 4+, plus, but because his batons are mechanic, you're not going to be using strength for close combat. It's essentially just for the wingdings. Strength 4+, plus is pretty good uh, for this character just for his throwing stuff. He is then movement 3, attack 4, defense 4, and endurance 7. So movement 3, pretty good, pretty standard for sidekicks. Uh, he is an acrobat, so movement 3 on an acrobat, pretty awesome. He is attack and defense 4, so he is being blocked 50% of the time, and he's only getting hit 50% of the time, which attack 4, defense 4 is pretty solid for him uh, with his point costs, with his uh, the way he attacks and stuff, pretty good. And then he is Endurance 7, which is actually a bit high for a sidekick. Usually sidekicks or like lower end free agents, they are Endurance 6. So Endurance 7 on this guy, totally welcome, really good. He's not a super tank. He doesn't have that Endurance 8 up uh, in the level of Batman or Deathstroke or Bane, but Endurance 7 isn't something to scoff at. So let's go on into his personal traits. So his first personal trait is going to be charismatic, which is going to be a fluffy rule for this character to have. So in the comics, in all the depictions of 
Nightwing or Dick Grayson. He is a very charismatic, very charming, very likable guy. And all of the superheroes really like him, like everyone from the Bat family, all the people from the Teen Titans. He is essentially the first creator of the Teen Titans. He brings a ton of uh, like teenage superheroes together and creates that team. So Charismatic on this character is very fluffy, awesome. So Charismatic is, instead of for every 150 points you get a free agent, you actually do it for every 100 points. So for a regular game of 350 points, Charismatic lets you take three free agents instead of two, which is awesome. Uh, I actually run a Batman list that I call the Bat Family, and it's led by Dick Grayson, and then I have uh, Batgirl as the sidekick, and then I have all the other Robins, so Tim Drake, uh, Damian Wayne, and Jason Todd, and that actually adds up to, I think it's exactly 350 points, and it's awesome. It's a fun team to play, and Bat Family is is my favorite thing about Batman. Like, the, the Batman storyline, all of that stuff. I'm not so much a Batman fan, but I love the Bat Family. They are sweet. And him having Charismatic makes it totally worth it. Really awesome. So his next personal trait is going to be Combo with Electric Baton. So Combo with this means that for every two attacks that you spend in his four attack, you get an extra. So you put four tokens in there, those four tokens turn into six tokens. So this guy can lay down the hurt when he attacks somebody in close combat, especially since the batons are handy, you get to reroll the hit, and then they're mechanics, so they damage on a three plus. Really, really great. His next personal trait is going to be Explosive Gel. This is uh, an ability that is hardly ever used on the tabletop. Uh, a explosive gel is when you're in base with a terrain feature like a lamppost you can spend a special and put an explosive gel counter on that piece of terrain and then anytime later in the game you can spend a special counter and a, and blow up the explosive gel and break the lampposts which can be really good, but if you're already going to run over and base them, why not just attack them with your baton? Uh, in competitive play, I don't see this used at all, but we have made some like special scenarios where you've got to go either blow open a door or blow open a safe, and you've got to use explosive gel like that helps you. Uh, then we use it that way, but in competitive play, I almost never see this used. His next personal trait is going to be Acrobat. Acrobat is the thing everybody knows and loves. It's your base movement turns into 12 instead of 10. You get to ignore intervening terrain and models because you can just like flip over cars and walls and stuff, not care about them, as well as other characters. It also gives you the dodge rule, so for every movement counter you spend, you can dodge bullets as long as you roll equal to or under your movement, which is super awesome. Everybody loves uh, acrobats. His next personal trait is going to be the bat claw. So combining acrobat and bat claw, this guy is really, really fast. So bat claw is you spend a move and a special, you give up your base movement, and you can move up to 30 centimeters and the move has to be a vertical change. So you can go from being on the street to being on a car to being on a car on top of a building or on top of a building into the street, all of that stuff, but you can't just like scoot along the ground. So no moving from one part of the street to another part of the street. Uh, super fluffy, really like it. His last personal trait is going to be sneak attack sneak attack is going to be something that actually makes him very very effective because he is only attack four which is decent like it's pretty good he's only getting blocked on fours fives and sixes but sneak attack means that you can spend one special 
And as long as the person that you attack couldn't draw a line of sight to you at the beginning of your activation, they can't spend defense counters to try to block. So sneak attack on top of the combo with batons and the batons are handy and mechanic means this guy can knock next to anyone out in a turn. Uh, really, really effective. I really like the way sneak attack works with this character. And then his last thing is going to be his special trait, which is Electric Storm. Unfortunately, this is another rule that's on Nightwing that I don't see used very often. I think mostly because of its cost encounters. Uh, but let's go ahead and read through it. So it costs three special and one attack. And you center the blast template on Nightwing, which is pretty big. And all miniatures except for Nightwing that are partially or wholly under the template, take a strength four hit that does double stun. This attack can only be used once a turn and Nightwing can attack before or after this uh, special attack. So just like I mentioned, I don't see this used very often in uh, competitive play, almost never just because he's so much better with just using the electric batons and damaging on a 3+, plus and you get combo, so tons of attacks. You can also combo that with sneak attack, uh, but you can't electric storm sneak attack because it costs 3 special. You also can't back claw or run and do electric storm because it costs 3 special, and that's all the special that you get. So it's very situational to uh, be able to use this, and then I've never seen it used. So let's go over his reputation cost and funding. So reputation, he costs 85 points, and funding, he costs no dollars. So 85 points, pretty solid. for The, the bang for the buck that you get for this guy is pretty solid. Uh, he's super duper mobile. And then attack and defense four, uh, you really can't get better than what he is for the point cost. When you compare him to other characters that are the same point cost as this, that are bad guys that don't have bat claws, uh, most of the time they're not acrobats. Uh, and he, he's just a really solid character for his reputation. Then his... Funding, like it's confusing why he has a range attack and doesn't cost any money. And it's pretty awesome. A lot of times I hear that this character is the new Batman for the Batman crew because you take this guy as your leader, you're saving points because you're not spending a hundred or, or more points on a Batman, uh, and then you get a ton of bang for the buck. Uh, for how many points that this guy costs. I can totally see that with him being charismatic. It also makes it so you can take more free agents. Uh, really, really good character. So strengths and weaknesses. Let's go over his strengths. So strengths is going to be his sneak attack with his electric batons and then how fast he is. Uh, it's really, really effective, but you kind of run out of tokens because he's only willpower six. Uh, running out of tokens makes it so he doesn't get to do all of those attacks because it, essentially you have to be around a corner and you get one dice of movement, so you get to do uh, 12 centimeters plus d6 centimeters around a corner spend a special to sneak attack, and then use four counters to attack, and that turns into six, but you have to be really close to be able to pull that off, and you have to be behind a corner because the your target can't see you. So it's really hard to pull all of that off. The way to get around that is with the new uh, FAQ, Teen Titans get teamwork too, so as long as he's within 10 centimeters of another Teen Titan, he can use their counters as if they're his own. So that means he can borrow attack counters and get that combo off, makes him really, really effective. 
and weaknesses. Weaknesses are going to be just like I said, his willpower is only willpower six. So unless you have somebody with teamwork, unless you have, uh, like, you take him into Teen Titans crew and you get teamwork, um, unless you do something like that, this guy is going to be short on counter sometimes and being able to pull off all the really super things. Outside of that, really solid character, great replacement for Batman, great boss for a crew, especially for uh, a Batman crew. The other thing that is a great strength is the Flash and Arrow book. The uh, equipment that you can buy, if you take Nightwing, you can make one of your uh, henchmen an acrobat. I think it's called like circus training or something like that. I don't have it in front of me, but it's awesome. I put it on guys like Delta or uh, any of the SWAT members really because the SWAT members, they're movement three. And you make one of those SWAT members an acrobat, like the guy, you do it to Delta, you do it to Bravo. Uh, it makes them really, really good because now all of a sudden they're movement 12 and they can ignore terrain and they get the dodge rule. So they get to dodge bullets in their bulletproof vests, they become next to unkillable uh, if you just try to shoot at them. It doesn't work. It makes it so shooting at them is totally not worth it. A really good way to do it, and it's just a nice little bonus of taking Nightwing in a crew. Really, really good. I really, really like it. So let's go ahead and get on to the paint job that I did for this guy. So here's the paint job I did for Nightwing, also known as Dick Grayson. I went with the red and black scheme instead of the blue and black scheme. I really like the red uh, just because I like the red against the black. It's also when he's a little edgier. I uh, really like that when he first gets uh, to be Nightwing uh, outside of uh, being a team up with Batman. Really, really like that. He's great, uh, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, how do you use this guy? What do you like about him on the table? And remember, cause bad guys.